Hey guys, what's going on? Hope you are doing well. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. Hope you are enjoying the new year. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that's under talked about in the athletic community, in the football community, and that is binge eating. Many people, many athletes suffer with this and it's not talked about enough. So I wanna cover some things on how to stop binge eating. Before I get into this video, I wanna clarify that I'm not a binge eating expert. I'm not a psychologist. I don't deal with this professionally, but I've dealt and helped a lot of clients through this issue. I've read up and done a lot of research on this issue. It's very true in my heart. I've had some family members suffer from it. So I wanna to talk to you today and I wanna give you 15 tips on how to stop binge eating. Binge eating could be very, very detrimental to your health, to your weight, to your heart, to your entire body if it continues and becomes a routine habit. Basically, binge eating is eating a large quantity of food, tons and tons of food in a short and condensed period of time. As always with any mental health issue or anything going on with yourself, you need to know that there's not something that's wrong with you. Binge eating isn't a normal thing but it's very, very common. So I don't want you to be ashamed with it. You are not alone. Many people suffer through this issue. Like I said, I've helped people through this. So you are not alone. So the urge to binge eat may feel like it comes on suddenly, but most of the time there's an issue going on behind the scenes that you don't realize that makes you want to binge eat. The most common issue that I've seen and why people binge eat is because they wanna kind of cover up feelings that they have, emotions that they have with food because food is a way to comfort yourself. In general, when you're spending time with family, when you're spending time with friends and you're eating good food, food boosts your serotonin so it makes you feel better. It gives you a dopamine spike so it gives you a quick feeling of feeling good. But when, obviously when it goes overboard and you start eating past the point of fullness and you start eating even when you're not hungry, that's when we have to kind of address this issue. Like I said before, if you make food or alcohol or drugs a way to comfort yourself and get you out of your present state and away from your emotions and your feelings, it can obviously lead to bad outcomes. Something that I noticed that's very common in the fitness industry is that binge eating can arise from this good and bad foods labeling. And personally, it's something that I've actually done in the past. I've labeled foods good and bad, and over the past couple years, I've tried to address it myself and within my coaching to kind of stay away from those phrases. Because I notice if you start to use those phrases, it's just like alcohol when you were younger. And I'm not saying that you should drink, but for example, in the US, if you're under 21 years old, you can't drink. But the amount of kids that wanna try alcohol and drink alcohol when they're underage, is unbelievable because when you can't try something, you can't do something or it's off limits, that makes you wanna do it even more. So that's the same thing that we can talk about when we talk about food. If you label foods as no, you can't eat that at all, or yes, this is very, very good, but mainly when you label foods that are not, you say not good for you, these are off limits, that kind of gets yourself in a mindset of good and bad food labeling and that makes you want that food even more. So letting yourself open up and be willing to eat those foods every once in a while in moderation is okay. That's why I like to discuss often the 80-20 rule, the 90-10 rule, depending on your goals, how serious you are, and your body composition goal. I try to talk about foods that are aligned with your goals and foods that aren't aligned with your goals. And 80% of the time, you should try to eat aligned with your goals 20% of the time, you can go out and you can enjoy yourself. Have a donut, have a piece of cake, have a chocolate bar, and don't beat yourself up for it. Enjoy it, because that's what happens with binge eating. This good and bad foods myth leads to eating it, screwing up, and then you say you failed, and then you say, okay, I'm gonna keep going. So for example, if you put chocolate cake off limits, and then you eat chocolate cake, and then you're in your head beating yourself up for it, then you tell yourself you screwed up, and then you can say to yourself, hey, well I screwed up so I'm just gonna keep going. That's what I've seen with a lot of clients before. I've actually had one client who said one time, 
He went home after a bad day of training, he felt like crap and he ate a bowl of ice cream. After the bowl of ice cream, he felt kind of bloated and he felt bad for himself. He didn't fully enjoy the ice cream. So he just said, you know what, screw it. I already screwed up my diet. I already ate this bad food that was off limits. So let me eat the whole tub. He went to eat the whole tub. Then he ate a full box of cereal. And that's what happens. Instead of getting into the good and bad foods labeling, allow yourself to enjoy treats once in a while. And just like I tell all my clients and like I tell you guys on social media, enjoy it and just get right back on track. That's the most important thing. As long as you get back on track, you'll be absolutely fine. You cannot screw up. Being said, I wanna get into 15 specific tips of how to stop binge eating. The number one tip, like I said in the beginning, is if you feel like this binge eating is out of control and it's been going on for a while and you feel like you don't and you can't have a handle of this and this video might not help you, I would highly recommend to see a therapist. There are psychologists, there are people who really, really specialize in this. They can definitely get you off this train, but if you don't think you need a therapist, I think the rest of these 14 tips will really, really help you. So the second tip that I have for you is stop the fad diets. Like I said before, when you label foods and you put yourself on some kind of fad diet, it makes you crave the foods that you can't have even more. Fasting or eliminating foods from your diet can definitely increase cravings and it can increase the likelihood of overeating. So like I said before, try to have a balanced diet of whole foods, fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, high quality complex carbohydrates based around your training sessions, high quality fats like I've talked about many times before, and then once in a while, enjoy yourself. The third tip, if you struggle with binge eating, is do not fast. Avoid skipping meals. A regular eating pattern, I'm not saying that you have to eat at the same exact time each day, I'm not saying you have to eat the same foods each and every day, but a regular eating pattern aligned with your training, your circadian rhythm, when you wake up, when you go to sleep, is definitely, definitely better for you and it keeps you on track in the long run. It keeps you on that track of positive momentum, feeling good, getting into a positive routine. So try to stick to a consistent meal schedule. Like I said, you don't have to eat at the same exact time every day, but try to do it at similar times each and every day. The fourth tip on how to overcome binge eating is mindfulness. I talk about this all the time in my content, mindfulness, meditation, breath work, all means the same thing. Basically, the reason that mindfulness and meditation is so effective at improving your performance, improving your mood, improving your day-to-day -day life, improving your, your relationships, is because you get into this mindset of impermanence. You know that feelings and emotions aren't permanent. They're temporary. They pass just like waves on a beach. So it's the same thing with your thoughts. If you have a thought and you keep thinking about it and you overthink, you overanalyze, it just gets worse. I've described this in, in an Instagram post before, but I wanna refer back to this reference again. If you know what a snow globe is, think of your brain as a snow globe and think as the snow in, in the snow globe as your thoughts. If you shake the snow globe, all the snow is gonna go all over. That's just like your thoughts in your head. If you have a thought and you think too much about it, boom, your mind starts going. But if you just let the snow globe sit and you just let it be and you don't touch it, everything settles. And that's the same exact thing for thoughts. If you just let that thought settle and you don't act on it right away, if you don't take an action right away and you just let it be, it'll pass whether it's a good one or whether it's a bad one. And like I described in the beginning, a couple of my clients in the past, what I've read upon in the research is people, they get these feelings, they get these emotions, and right away, they wanna get rid of that emotion. So what do they do? They go to food, they go to alcohol, they go to drugs, they go to video games. They wanna get out of that state, they want a quick dopamine spike, and if you have the ability to just sit there, like meditation teaches you, when you sit, I do it every day now in the morning for 10 minutes. It's part of my New Year's resolution, if you wanna call it that, New Year's goal. You sit there, you deep breathe, you focus on your breath, and if you have a thought, 
you let it be. You don't act on it. There's no point acting on it. Let it be and you move on, you go back to your breath. So I highly recommend you practice meditation because then it will come over into your life and really change the course of your life. Number five, make sure you're hydrating with proper water, proper electrolytes, because dehydration can sometimes mask itself as hunger. And when you're not properly hydrated, you may have more of a tendency to have more cravings for sugary foods, which can then lead to overeating. Number six, increase your protein intake. Try to have at least in every single big meal, 25 to 35 grams of protein. In snacks, try to have at least 15 to 20 grams of protein because protein is the macronutrient that keeps you the fullest. Protein also has the highest thermic effect of food of any macronutrient. So it basically means protein takes a lot of energy to digest. So you're basically burning calories as you eat it. I'm not saying it burns all the calories, but it has the highest thermic effect of food. So your body works hard to digest the protein. Protein will enhance your feeling of fullness and it'll keep most cravings at bay. Number seven, eat more fiber. Try to get more fiber in your diet, oatmeal, fruits, vegetables, all great sources of fiber. You can search up on Google, tons of great foods with a lot of fiber in them. But basically what fiber does is it keeps you full and obviously it helps you go to the bathroom. So if you're having trouble taking a poop, make sure you eat more fiber. Number eight, remove any foods that are trigger foods from your house. Make it harder to get that food. So if you have a food, for example, for me, if I have chips in the house and it's a full bag and I eat a couple chips and I just say, yeah, I'm just going to have a couple. I always have the urge to go back and get more chips, which then leads to me wanting to eat more snacky stuff like that. And I know when I have that stuff in the house, I don't feel as good. So I don't keep it in the house. Like I said before, if I want to eat it, I go to the grocery store, get myself a small bag and I enjoy it, but I don't keep it in the house. When you don't have it in your house, it's harder to eat it. For example, chips are very hyper palatable, which means you're eating them, it's delivering calories into your body, a lot of calories, a lot of fat, and you're not getting full. And it just makes you feel hungrier and hungrier. And it's been shown in the research that food manufacturers have purposely done this so you keep eating more and more. Number nine, make sure you have a regular training schedule. Like I said before, when you have a regular eating schedule and also a regular training schedule, your sleep cycles are aligned. Hopefully you wake up and go to sleep at the same time every day. Hopefully you eat your meals at the same time every day. Hopefully you train at the same time every day or at least try to because your body loves routines. When you get into your routines and you're in positive momentum, you're doing it every single day, your body loves that when you're in a regular training schedule, training routine, it's definitely going to reduce the likelihood of any binge eating episodes. Number 10, make sure you eat a fiber and protein rich breakfast. When you start your day off with a fiber rich and a protein rich breakfast, like I said before, protein and fiber are going to help fill you up. It's going to help keep cravings at bay. This is going to help reduce the risk of you overeating and over consuming calories. And obviously it's a great way to start your day. Number 11, sleep at least eight hours per night or seven and a half, try to hit eight. When you sleep eight hours per night, it's been proven in the research that it reduces cravings, cravings at bay, obviously makes you feel better physically and mentally. And when you're feeling better physically and mentally, you're going to make better decisions throughout the day. You have more control of your actions and you're more in your mind and in your body. Number 12, notice patterns. This is very, very important. So what I would recommend if you feel like you suffer from binge eating is have a journal by your side, or you could even take it in your phone, in your notes. If you feel the urge to binge eat, try to think why you have that urge. What is going on right now at this point in time in your life? Write that down. That's going to help you find patterns within your day, within your life of why you go to binge eating to comfort yourself instead of dealing with it in other ways. Number 13, talk to someone besides a licensed psychologist, building an excellent social support system will really help you feel better mentally and physically, which will definitely lead you not to binge eat. 
Number 14, meal prep. I've talked about it on this channel many times before. When you meal prep and you have your foods already laid out for you, it reduces the risk of you sporadically eating. And that's what we see here. Most of the time, you're not gonna sit down, eat a meal and binge eat and overeat because you're sitting at a table, you're focused on the present, whether you're with good friends, whether you're with family, you have those feelings of fullness, you feel the food nourishing your body, but when you eat sporadically, for example, if you come home from a long work day or a hard gym workout and you're super hungry and you don't have anything prepared, you can reach for things all over and that adds up, those calories add up. And then like I said in the beginning, if you say to yourself, damn, I already screwed up, I fell off the train and you just keep going, that's what leads to these episodes. So if you properly meal prep, I always recommend my clients on a Sunday and a Wednesday to meal prep for the whole week, I guarantee you're gonna stay away from binge eating. Number 15, stop weighing yourself. If you're emotionally tied to your weight, don't do it, don't do it. I don't have my clients weigh themselves often. They do everything through progress pictures, through assessments, and most importantly, we want them to perform better and feel better on the pitch. If you're emotionally tied to your weight, if your weight goes up, you're sad. If your weight goes down, you're happy. Stay away from the scale and find other ways to measure your progress. And most importantly, I wanna end this with the most important tip, the 16th tip, which I didn't tell you was coming. You can't screw up. No matter what you do, you cannot screw this up. So if you feel like you're suffering from binge eating, if you feel like you're alone, if you feel like this is a disorder, you can't. The only way you can screw up is if you completely quit, if you completely give up. And I know you're not gonna do that. That's why you're watching this video. I know you're gonna take action on these steps. And as always, if you have any questions, any concerns, please send me an email, drop a comment below, and I will be glad to help because like I said, this is an issue that's close to my heart and I wanna help you out if you're going through it. And I wanna end this video off with a quote that I heard from my mentor, Jordan Syatt. He said he read it in a book somewhere. He didn't know who said the quote. So let's give the credit to Jordan Syatt. This is how the quote reads. Giving up because of a setback is like slashing your other three tires because you got a flat tire. How awesome is that? Setbacks happen, downs happen, failures happen, mistakes happen. What matters is if you get back on track. So if you feel like you failed, if you feel like you hit a setback, if you feel like you ate too much, or you feel like you ate foods that weren't aligned with your goals, that's fine. Just get right back on track. Don't let it take you down a rabbit hole of completely quitting, of completely stopping training, of completely going off the rails and not getting back on track. It's no big deal. If you ate a meal, that you don't feel like is aligned with your goals, if you ate a snack that doesn't feel like you're aligned with your goals, if you miss workouts, it's no big deal. Just get right back on track the next workout and the next meal and you'll be fine. I hope you enjoyed this highly educational content. I hope it was, I really worked hard on this video, did a lot of research myself. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button, please hit that subscribe button and drop a comment with what you wanna see in the next video. Deuces.